Hey guys, and welcome back to Oxygen Not Included, Clay's amazing space colony adventure extraordinaire. We're about to go into Twitchy's Tremendous Trojans because my name is Twitchy and this is my Tremendous Trojan Asteroid. Yes, indeed, we have packed it with 14 duplicates and we're going to go around and try and make their lives as comfortable as possible. We have a few things that don't actually look like they're working at the moment, but you know, all I need to do is start time running and then actually the simulation starts working and everything works out fine. I managed to confuse myself at the beginning of this recording session but that's fine. It's nothing really that we have to worry about. One thing we don't have to really super worry about, though, is our food shortage. And this is mainly brought on by the lack of atmosphere that we have in the base right now. All plants in farmlands have requirements, and of course, most of those requirements include a certain level of atmospheric pressure. And as you can see in the base, we do not quite meet that level of requirement. Now, rather than just open up all the doors and let the, the nastiness from outside come in, I'm going to make myself a secondary oxygen production facility. I slapped down a blueprint that is very similar to the one that we actually have below there. It's a couple of oxidized, uh, sorry, electrolyzers in the middle that split water into hydrogen and oxygen. And then I have two oxygen pumps down below to move the oxygen and one hydrogen one up the top. This whole setup is reliant, of course, on the fact that hydrogen is buoyant in an oxygen atmosphere. Is that how we say it? Oxy uh, hydrogen rises up, oxygen goes down below. So we're going to use those two pumps to keep them separated. And, and thankfully, this is not a very turbulent area, so we can keep them uh, nicely separated just through natural means. Now one of the problems with having uh, such a beautiful, glorious and wonderful exosuit network as I have is that we actually do end up with a couple of bottlenecks uh, and this of course is the airlocks themselves. Uh, there are only a certain number of exosuits to go around and of course we need lots of people to be working on this job. I mean it's great that Brum is going around doing the three little dip jobs that he can do at any one time but that just uh, isn't enough to get it built as quick as I would like. On the other side of the base, you can see that we are trying to fix up the cold water tank as as, as always with... I say fix up. We're efficientizing. <laughs> yes, we're making it more efficient uh, on this side. I'm particularly worried about the right-hand side of the tank freezing before the left-hand side uh, pumps out the cold. So I am taking down some of the thermal shift plates on that side so that we can keep the cold concentrated or let the heat dissipate out more. I don't know, however you want to word that. The problem is, of course, how long these take. We are currently at four times acceleration. You saw that we only actually had time to break one of those plates there. Just disgustingly long yes indeed but we've got another pump down and i have noticed that we have a little bit of a problem sorry another exosuit dock down uh, but i've noticed that we've been taking a little bit of damage from uh, not having the right atmosphere inside the pipes you can see there some hydrogen had actually escaped and this means that our pressure sensors are set up just a little bit wrong also this one on the le on the left here it's not needed in the system anymore i'm not sure how it's getting uh, pressurized uh, pressurized at all. I'm not sure how it's getting any more pressure from uh, things that it has been cut off from, but you know, that's something we've got to deal with. Zed going around and fixing up the exosuit docks that have taken the wrong element damage from the hydrogen, and hopefully the fact that we've tweaked those atmosphere sensors will help us out there. Another thing that I want to do is you might remember that I wanted to put some extra uh, exosuit docks into this main airlock here, but we're having problems with the fact that there is a entrance to the water tank underneath, so it's time to move that entrance, right? Surely. So the first thing we need to do is make sure that people can get in and out so let's build the entrance first before we start taking away the other ones and i'm really really wondering where everyone is now obviously uh, as i say there are only three exosuits and i'm expecting that at least one person is going down towards the oil or anything like that of course we have that big other water tank that we are slowly putting together as well so that might be taking time and look space actual space there's some parallax on the go there i just wanted to get that into the video to show uh, all in all the uh, dupes doing quite well at building the new entrance and we are waiting, waiting, waiting for some more gas to flow here. Now, I'm trying to keep the, uh, the more the ratios relevant to each other than the actual absolute amount of gas. So I want to try and bring the amount of gas in the entire volume down low enough that the electrolyzers carry on running constantly. There is a situation where you can get into where there is too much gas and it's like overpressure and it won't put, put out anymore. And I, I want to avoid that if at all possible. Okay, so we've been putting in the majority of the infrastructure for this new electrolyzer. Setup. You can see that we have uh, gas pump.
pipes and pumps and electrolyzers actually going in. More importantly than that, we have this entire tile network around the outside to keep everything contained as well as uh, some mesh tiles in there to make things work. But it doesn't have any water at the moment and that is something that we need to make sure we can pump in at some point. Just having a quick look around and seeing how the base is doing. I'm a little bit disappointed about how, uh, how little oxygen we've actually got flowing at this point. It's been a nearly two cycles now and I was expecting people to uh, be able to get this done quicker. So I just open up that airlock at the top there. Now obviously we have a few people walking around in exosuits and now we have people walking around not in exosuits. This can lead to a few health hazard issues and stuff like that but right now I'm much more interested in getting my oxygen flowing. Yes indeed. I'm going to rip down the air vent that is inside the airlock here. Uh, not for uh, reasons to do with pressure but just to have somewhere to put the exosuit and uh, uh, the exosuit dock and I actually think I forget to go back and replace that so we may end up with a negative pressure situation in our airlock and that's a li little bit disappointing because I was keeping the pressure high in the airlock to uh, make it so that the clean air will rush out rather than the bad air rush in. So we've got the majority of the stuff in the oxidizer room actually built now. Much, much of the infrastructure, we've got the electrolyzers and the pumps, or at least they are very close to being put in. But there's a few things that we don't have. Things such as a power and a kickstart mechanism and things like that. So we've put the uh, hydrogen generator down below. That is almost specifically just to deal with the amount of hydrogen we're going to be getting. Extra power is going to be fun and cool, but it's really just to keep the pressure down inside the the oxygen cell there uh, the other thing up above is a transformer the transformer is there so we can start using thinner wires and then we don't have to break the seal of the oxygen box to put heavy what wires in there Shrouticus is desperately trying to get himself caught on the other side of the building there but we managed to tell him to move around just in the right amount of time and there we go the final wirings are put in a place everything is looking nice and smooth though I don't appear to have noticed that we don't actually have any water running up and into there right now but I'm sure at some point we will get on with that. Why is it Mad Frank or is that another three in Mad Frank up at the top? They're doing a beautiful job digging out all the slime but there is a bit of a problem with the fact that they cannot make their way back right now. Uh, so I'm going to drop down everyone's priorities and make sure these uh, ladders that will be what will act as their bridge is the highest priority possible out there so that we can get people in and out as quick as we can. There's nothing quite as bad as having a duplicate isolated from the rest of the colony. I can only assume that they are some sort of deep uh, social insect type creatures. Maybe when we were putting them together, we actually took some ant or bee DNA and put that inside to make a, a better, stronger colonial spirit. Are we, the player, actually the manifestation of a hive mind? Is that what's going on? I think that might actually be the thing that's going on there. We we are the uh, the embodiment of the hive mind DNA that we took from the from the ants and the bees and put in the duplicates. Yeah, that sounds plausible to me. Okay, we're having a little bit of a problem here with the fact that I don't actually appear to have an awful lot of metals in the base. Uh, we've got to go around and fix that at some point, but I've turned all my gold uh, gold amalgam into actual gold. We're running out of copper because you only get a certain amount of copper inside the sandstone biome um, before, and, and then I'm turning it into like exosuits and wires and stuff like that all around. So these are all things that need to be dealt with. So I need to at least go and find a new, uh, new source of uh, metals. At the moment, I've got a little bit of copper up top there and I'm, I'm, whilst I am going to go ahead and use it I don't really want to if I'm to be honest with you I want to I want to try and use iron around because iron is a much more plentiful resource uh, and also gold given like the number of swamp biomes we appear to have around us I didn't think we actually I, I didn't think there was actually that unbalanced uh, in, in all but this seed just seems to be very swamp heavy Anyway, I managed to finally get the water, at least the orders, put in for the water. And I'm going to go around and play with the, uh, the priorities a little bit here, just to make sure that the other things are lower priority and we get the water up to a high priority, because it turns out that the water is one of the more important things to make sure you have a running for an electrolyzer setup. Of course, power is also kind of equally important. If you don't have power and water, you're not going to have a great time. But I feel like the water is uh, something that we've been lagging behind with for a little bit here. I uh, hook up an outflow gas uh, outflow pipe to the top gas pump up there. Uh, I really want to try and just empty out all the fluids, all the gases, sorry, that are not hydrogen and normal oxygen in there. This is going to take a little bit of problems, uh, but thankfully, with the electrolyzers pumping out, I should be able to use their fresh gases to kind of pump out the old stuff. The other option, of course, would have been to pump it to vacuum, um, but then if, uh, if I've forgotten anything inside there, I would also have then had to have like cracked the door back open and gone back in, and at least if we have a few gases, 
gases in there when we crack the door open, it doesn't get terrible. The uh, germs are starting to dissipate, that's great. So what I'm going to do is get rid of that um, water valve that we had there and replace it with the new fancy electronic system that we put in on the top one last time. That's just going to be a water sensor with a shut-off valve uh, set to turn it off as soon as it detects water on the top of the tank. I am now pumping out, as I say, and down the bottom that we can see that we've got a bit of polluted oxygen coming out into the base. I'm kind of alright with that because the, the uh, base can take polluted oxygen and carbon dioxide. These are two things that can be filtered out actually inside the base. The hydrogen is a little bit more awkward, but that is all being vented on the left-hand side, so that is all a cool and um, manageable, a totally manageable. So, uh, you remember how I was saying that I uh, realised that I didn't have enough iron? Bam, there's a whole load of iron just about to get dug out there. Unfortunately, it's going to take a while for people to actually come and dig off. Obviously, the exosuits are needed, but having a quick look at the oxygen overlay, yeah, actually, we're starting to get oxygen flowing from here now, and that is a great weight off of my mind. It's going to take a little while for the food to start picking back up, but that, that's going to be cool. I'm worried that the oxygen might be a little bit too warm, so I'm going to go through this cold biome over here and try and do my best to pick up all the weasels. That's also going to take a little bit of time, again, because of the restrictions of the exosuit. But having a look at the pumping system, everything seems to be working out pretty well spot on. Just got to wait for the hydrogen to build up and start displacing all the other gases, and then we'll have the entire system set up and ready to go. Got to try and figure out how we're going to get the hydrogen down to the hydrogen generator, but that's literally going to be a case of when I think the hydrogen is flowing pure. Just move the pipe down. Okay, we're well, having a look about a little bit of a look around the bottom of my base here, and I'm like, uh, these algae terraria, not only do they eat a lot of water and eat a lot of algae, but they're not really doing a uh, bang up job. So we're going to get rid of these two on the end here and put down a carbon dioxide scrubber in their, in their place. That should ho hopefully take care of all of the carbon dioxide for our needs. Now this pipe that I'm just about to put in here, I'm not sure whether this is going to be the way that it stays. You can see that we've got two floors that kind of like diverge from each other there. And whilst that's going to be great for like storage or something, oh in fact I could put some storage compactors down there, uh, it's not exactly the best use of space in the, in the area either. The reason that it does slope in the way that it does is to try and funnel down the carbon dioxide into that area where it gets uh, processed and that's kind of just a hangover from earlier on in the base design so maybe at some point we'll want to change that maybe move the carbon dioxide skimmer underneath the slime distilleries or something like that yeah I, I, I'm not entirely certain right now the plan is working so we're just gonna go with the working solution uh, and it really is in big inverted commas because it, it does work but it doesn't it doesn't gel particularly well with the base. Uh, but that said, uh, we don't really use down here for that much. So other than just moving some slime around, which which I really should set up a slime distillery on the other side of the base so we're not moving slime fully through the base every time. All right, we uh, set the in impatience alarm ringing for the, uh, the water pipes there just to make sure everything runs before the cycle ends. It looks like it's all going well. And there doesn't appear to be any germs in that lower water tank now. So I'm going to set the pump pumping or at least set the order to throw the switch to get the pump pumping so that tomorrow one of the duplicates can come around and do that for us. I'm starting to feel a little bit dodgy about the amount of oxygen that we have in the hydrogen line. Uh, it's not really something that I wanted to happen and I think it came from the pump on the left. Uh, that said, I'm going to change the, the volumes a little bit there, the gas detectors a little bit there just to make doubly sure. I'm also looking at the oven room where the, where the heat coils are at and uh, there's a few things in there that we're going to need to let duplicates in for so that's, uh, that's something else. I was going to move uh, some more oxygen down here, but uh, the place that I put the vent actually has an oxygen line running back through it, but I don't want to steal the exosuit oxygen for the base oxygen, so I'm going to have to rethink where that goes. That's why those got placed down and almost immediately uh, cancelled. But Landstrider has managed to lock himself in the water tank. That's alright, that just means he's the guy that gets to go on and uh, uh, break ground on the actual entrance there. Oh, beautiful. Mad Frank finishing off the job just as we uh, make sure everything's sealed in. And I've got a question for you guys out there. Obviously, we have little areas inside our base that are still uh, au naturel, if you will. And some of them I'm thinking of turning into um, actual dioramas. Like, you know, here is a natural piece of rock that we found. Or here is a, a small ecosystem that we tried our best not to disturb. Um, 
But yeah, do you guys think I should do that or should I just rip it all down? Rip it all down and turn it all into a, a mass urbanization. But I think the water tank in particular needs emptying out and seeing if we can do anything with. Not this water tank, but actually my main water tank up there in the main base. So the iron is getting dug out and I am all about this. Go guys, go. We need to get some more metals that are moving. But also we are replacing the tiles underneath that power uh, transformer there. Just because, you know, it's, it's also iron and we need more iron and iron is definitely something that needs to flow. So looking around, there are definite problems that need to be fixed, uh, particularly with the power lines. And also I want to point out the yellow colour of the power lines. You can see lots of things are flashing yellow uh, all around. I don't think that's things overloading. I think that's things getting close to using all the power that is available. Um, so if you will, the, the line can take up to 2,000 watts, but we're only producing 1.6 uh, and we're consuming 1.4. And because the 1.4 is close to 1.6, it's showing us a yellow. I think that's what's going on there. I don't think we've got any actual major problems uh, cracking off. But if, if you guys do think I've got a major problem cracking off, let, let me know and tell me what I've overlooked because that would be pretty handy. Every time that the printer is ready to print, all I'm doing is printing more food. Uh, this is not actually because I need any food, but it's been more because I don't want to take on any duplicates, but I also don't want to have like a uh, glowing printer constantly there. And also, look at the look at the gas flow. Oh man, I didn't say it in time. But there's, this gas vent is causing the same problems that we had with the exosuit dock uh, earlier on. You remember how if the exosuit dock was full, it was causing a bit of a stutter in the... Uh, in the gas flow. That's happening with the gas vent as well. And that's a, that's a little bit disappointing because I was kind of hoping that the gas vent would just cause things to flow. I don't I don't see why it wouldn't, but you know, that that's the way that sometimes things will work and you've got to work around these things. Having a quick look around, I'm actually explaining all the gases to my girlfriend at this point. Not that you guys need to know that, but she came in and went, oh, what's all this stuff? And I was like, oh, this is this and this is this and this is my water line, by the way. And I went off on a bit of a bit of a ramble, as you do when you're trying to show stuff to people. But we fire up the impatience alarm once again because there is a tile that has not been replaced underneath that but uh, underneath the power transformer but I don't know if you saw that but even though the tile got replaced it was still being considered as uh, an unsuitable placement now I think I don't I don't know but I think this might be the impatience alarm getting in there and uh, kind of messing up uh, it thinking that it finished the job I, I don't know it's the only thing that's different maybe it was just a, a random random bug that would have happened whether the impatience alarm was on or not but uh yeah uh, we will go back to that and have a look but we're just going to dig up some copper move some stuff around the base change a, a few a gas levels because i'm still seeing oxygen zipping out but you can see look missing missing tile underneath they all appear to be fine i don't know why that's wrong uh, and i immediately instantly made the decision to rip it down and put a new one down checking the oil levels because of course we're going to have to get down there to start dealing with that and explain to my girlfriend the horrors of what actually happened when we broke through and had that oil spill. You guys remember that, right? So there's a new uh, new power transformer going down and that should make all our oxygen system uh, working again, or at least the oxygen for the exosuits. We're going around and we are building a filter system on this hydrogen because I've already noticed some damage happening to the anti-entropy machine and I don't want that to happen. I used to think that actually it was made out of material that we couldn't fix, but no, we just need to make actual iron, not iron ore, actual iron, uh, and we'll be able to replace it so that's a pretty solid the carbon skimmer is doing its job but we're actually getting down to so little air pressure down there that it's not able to continuously operate which is a bit of a shame a bit of a shame the heat is definitely getting back into the cold uh, cold tank there but that is uh, as expected as we are pumping clean water but hot into that tank for some reason we start following brum around and i actually don't know why i started following brum around just every now and then i will pick a random character to start following uh, but thankfully this guy is on his way to start working on the uh the, the the waste stuff on the left hand side of our oxygen production here so that's pretty cool but for some reason he goes all the way around like that did you just see that little lap that he made there for absolutely no reason causing turbulence inside our production facility there this, this could cause all sorts of troubles downstream but i think thankfully it's not a problem i've gone through and reset the permissions on all the doors so that should not never happen again talk of permissions man i need to get that that little filter system up on the top right there done as quickly as possible so they are rocking the nines uh, we don't put the impatience alarm on because you know it's not really necessary most of the time we're just waiting for things to get shuffled around um, and that will happen as quick as it can whether the impatience alarm is on or not looking at the farms i'm thinking yeah we definitely sorted out that food shortage issue well uh, so like 
Mission achieved on our first job. Uh, I'm, I'm going to put a, a hydrogen filter on here because I cannot guarantee that it's only going to be pure hydrogen coming out of the top pump there. I think I'd rather that the hydrogen pulled out oxygen than we put hydrogen in the base. I don't know. Let me know about that. The uh, keen-eyed of you would have noticed I've already made a mistake with that setup, though, and I will uh, get back to you with what that is in a moment. That gas geyser had not been set for analysis, I didn't realise. It uh, doesn't really matter because we've got, them, got all three hooked up with automatic systems anyway, but I thought I would send Mad Frank in there to go and have a look. You know, just so, just so we can plan ahead if we ever do actually need to plan ahead with the power situations. It'll be very interesting to see if any any of the dormant systems actually overlap. But I've got a feeling even if two of the dormant, uh, even if two of the gas geysers dormant uh, periods overlap, the third one's probably still going to be running. I, I've got a feeling with the three gas geysers, just we're never, never going to have deep downtime. Okay, so the problem with that is not just the power. I'm going to stare long and hard at it once the uh, once the impatient alarm gets set off, uh, and we have to follow someone around. I'm, I'm actually going to put off telling you what the problem is for as long as I can. Captain Sub's coming in and uh, having a look at the power lines here. Thankfully, none of the problems are the fact of a lack of resource, so that's no problem at all. And with that, uh, it's all built. And I'm, I'm clicking. I'm being like, why isn't this working? The hydrogen appears to be hooked up. Why? Oh, I've put it the wrong way around, haven't I? I've put the output to the input and the input to the output. That, that's that's such a thing. I have a quick look over to the other side to make sure that I didn't do it again because it is a problem that I do quite often and I thought I'd really got on top of that but no, no, just when I'm like slapping buildings down without thinking about it I still manage to put them down the wrong way. I don't, I don't know why, I don't know why but anyway, here comes Captain Subs to correct our issue for, for us. I'll turn it around. Do I put the impatience alarm on? No, I just put us up to a level 9. I probably should have hit um, an impatience alarm for that but I'm kind of alright for it. Uh, following people around, we've literally got this one system left to put into place. Well, I say this one one system. As soon as this is done, the only thing I really have left to do is to think about the uh, the hydrogen line over on the right-hand side. This, of course, has been a little, little bit of a, a task that we've had running for a couple of episodes now. It's just making sure that the uh, anti-entropy chilling device can carry on running forever, and I think it's going to. Uh, we seem to have quite good hydrogen flow on the go. Really want to get the oxygen flow are running. So I'm looking over this side and I'm wondering why why aren't these guys doing it? What's going on? Where, where are the people? But of course they're all just off doing other jobs because other things are higher priority. I mean uh, what would you think is higher priority than uh, filtering the hydrogen line? Well of course things like uh, the life support. Uh, it's never going to be build jobs or anything like that but I do have a few things such as the oxygen scrubbers and the power systems or the old power systems, I suppose they don't exist anymore, uh, that were on the highest priority possible. I am intrigued by the people that are sleeping during the day. I suppose this is the, uh, the fallout from a red alert during the night. Uh, but people seem to be going along and doing well. We've got Iron Ore saying that it's not available, but I've got a feeling this is actually just a parving issue, and as soon as uh, it all gets put inside the base, we're going to end up with a situation where people uh, from either side can use their exosuits to get inside, but if their exosuits are all happen to be used up on one of the airlocks, they're not going to be able to path to the resource on the other side. And I think that is what, that is what has gone down there. Um, taking a little time to throw some artwork into the uh, the relaxation room the massage parlor up there uh, because you know the more more niceness we have over that way the quicker people get better and stop being uh, such stressful little monsters water system is looking cool i'm just having a quick look around here to make sure nothing is looking bad and look how quick that printer turned over i'm starting to wonder whether the printer ticks over quicker if you uh, print things that are not duplicates this may or may not be the case also uh, with the out Outside, uh, outside area being so nasty, I've decided that I'm going to start doing up the airlock, or at least this airlock over here. Not only does it give our artists the chance to uh, to practice and get good, but also, you know, it's it's nice. It's nice to walk past and have uh, have nice things to, to look at. So we had a little bit of a resource issue over this side, but I'm also now starting to feel the fact that we don't actually have any hydrogen in the pipe for our hydrogen generator to power the. Uh, power the filter that we've just put in it's gonna hit me like a ton of bricks in a moment um, but it is something that I've just noticed well another thing is that I want to try and get to the, that 
uh, gas geyser, the steam geyser at some point, but obviously I've locked the doors, so that's a thing. Right, the impatience alarm is on again, and thankfully Brum is coming along to fix this. I say thankfully because he is one of the people with the building uh, building plus. That's that's like his job, his favourite job, so he does it in double the time. The hydrogen generator is done, and now I'm looking at it, and I'm like, oh no. Ah, oh, there's no hydrogen here. Ah, oh, what do I do about this? Uh, of course, it's actually really simple with what I do about this. It's the same thing we do to any other system that needs a quick kick, kick to start. We uh, throw up a manual generator. We tell everybody to do it at the highest possible priorities, just just short of a red alert, and uh, get that in, put in place for someone to run around. Mad Frank doing his job. You can see only 5% done. Oh, well, fifth done, sorry, not 5%. Probably about 10% done. Um, no, wait, a fifth is 20. Let's get those numbers right. <laughs> And he's going to just be working along for a few days there. Uh, I had airflow tiles put down underneath the, the manual generator. That's just habit from like having to keep duplicates free of carbon dioxide whilst they're working on those uh, manual generators. But thankfully, that's not necessary. Shadow here seems to be enjoying a nice long snooze in front of the exosuits. I just wanted to uh, make sure Shadow was all right. I was more more worried that uh, he might be in like carbon dioxide or something like that. But the thing that really should be worrying me is the water dripping down from where we've been digging. This worries me for many reasons. The main one is that we're going to have someone coming along to do the power at some point. Um, also, here we go, red alert, because it's the end of the days and like they just they didn't do the thing that i wanted them to do in one day so we're gonna red alert through their downtime i'm even tempted to uh, shuffle the downtime around just a little bit maybe give them a longer downtime in the morning and uh, no downtime in the evening or do i want to do it the other way like they wake up go straight to work and then downtime in the evening because most of them go straight to work anyway and giving them double evening downtime might be good. So I uh, set up some uh, deconstructs to give people better access to the toilets. That's that's probably a good play there. We, we don't need to climb up and down ladders to go to the toilet now, do we? But the last thing that needs to happen today is, of course, Sir Steve needs to come along and start the filter filtering so that they can provide the hydrogen to power the filter to provide more hydrogen and power the filter. Oh yeah, we are on our way on an infinite loop here, and we're not going to get any damage from the from the wrong element, so that's going to be pretty cool. I'm going to queue up a little bit of iron to get fixed here, so that we can fix the anti-entropy um, chilling device. But with that, I'm going to say thank you very much for joining me for this adventure, ladies and gentlemen. I will see you next time, where we'll definitely be improving the oxygen situation, maybe chilling down that the water that comes out of that cool steam vent and many other things to make our duplicates ni lives so much nicer. But I will see you then, when we're gonna do that. Bye!